Our next talk is by Yun Liu. He's a postdoc at Cambridge working with Richard Friend. And he's going to talk about Orbach tail of hybrid perovskites from localization landscape. Uh, can you see the slides? Perfect. Okay, great. Uh, so hi, good, good. Uh, hello everybody. Uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, utilizing the local localization landscape theory to understand the airbag tail in the hybrid perovskite uh, material system. Um, uh, so why are we interested in the perovskite material? So here is a, a power a solar cell efficiency chart versus time. So on the y-axis is the solar cell efficiency for different uh, solar cell technologies. And on the uh, x-axis is the is time. So, and you can see that Perovsky is the black curve uh, on the right-hand side. So it has seen a steady, uh, very rapid rise in efficiency uh, for the last less than 10 years. And yet it's rising to efficiency close to that of a silicon. Uh, I would like to point out that the theoretical efficiency for a single junction solar cell is only 33%. So uh, we are really pretty good uh, in, in a very short period of time. So there's a lot of interest to understand uh, this class of materials for obvious uh, solar cell applications and also other optical electronic applications because they are just uh, a, a sort of wonder material. And, and when, uh, so for the uh, mathematicians, uh, in, the, in the audience, I would like to just uh, briefly talk about what is a perovskite. Uh, so perovskite re refers to a crystal structure uh, of the general chemical formula of ABX3, uh, where A, uh, so if you imagine a, a box uh, and uh, on the left here, and A, a is the kind of cation uh, occupying the corner of the cube, and B is another cation, uh, typically lead, that occupies the center of the cube. And X is the anion, typically of the halide, uh, from the halide group, occupying the face of the cube. So there's, um, and, and uh, the sort of most successful um, perovskite material is the one listed below, is the methyl ammonium lead iodide, lead iodide system. But there's been a lot of other uh, ions and chemical species being explored to expand the library of perovskite systems. And, and that is why I, we feel that the localization landscape is very useful to understand these materials because this is a very um, a sort of soft material that is very tunable, both in compositional space and in, in, in sort of a band gap. So here is a, <coughs> a sort of illustration of how we can continuously tune the band gap uh, by increasing uh, the concentration of bromide. Say uh, on the figure on the right here, shows the band gap variation uh, when you have no bromide in the system uh, to have 100% bromide in the system and the band gap increases. So the, at, at zero bromide, the, the system is purely iodide. And as in, you increase the bromide, the band gap almost uniformly continuously increase to, to that of the bromide value. And this, is, uh, this material has no, prop, some of the problems we, we see typically in the three five system uh, where you have lattice mismatch or, uh, or sort of there's some certain compositional range whereby uh, you, you wouldn't form these materials and there's negligible boiling parameter. So it has offered a lot of um, uh, attractive uh, potentials for applying the landscape theory to these materials. And in addition to the static disorder that is very similar to the in-GAN system that the landscape theory has been very success successful to apply to, uh, another sort of interesting disorder that, uh, that, that is present in lead halide perovskite is the dynamic disorder, uh, which arises from the high phonon, uh, phonon occupancy at, at low frequency range. And we'll, we'll explore a little bit uh, more of that uh, later on, but we'll focus more on the static disorder part for now. So, so from this, we, we kind of see there's a lot of similarity between uh, sort of the in-GAN system and the perovskite system in that they both can be alloyed to take advantage of this, um, uh, 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 the band gap tuning and, 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 and things like that. So what we think is the first step to do is to just basically take our knowledge and take out uh, uh, two tools and understanding of the in-GAN system directly applied to perovskite. So what we're gonna do is to make a prototype a perovskite system uh, it, which is the cesium lead 
uh, bromide iodide uh, mixed. Uh, this is a very promising material that is very, uh, is highly luminescent. It is good for PV, as we discussed earlier, and it's also good for LED, for lighting and a lot of applications. So, uh, and by applying this localiz localization landscape theory, uh, what we hope to achieve is to understand the amount of degree of uh, disorder and wave function localization in these systems. So I think uh, there's, a, there's a joke that's saying that, you know, you can actually make the pros guy in, in your kitchen, right? Because these systems are so easy to uh, synthesize. However, do, even though they have such, uh, you know, easy synthesis method whereby defects and disorder are always present, this uh, system are very, very good materials. So how is that this static disorder and compositional disorder and, and the presence of defects is not, is not change, is, is affecting the wave function localization. And then secondly, more specifically, we want to see that how, uh, <clears throat> so how the herb active, how, how the herb active is uh, rather small for the static disorder uh, uh, at, at low temperature. And then uh, another crucial difference that the difference from Proskite to the Ingan system uh, is because Proskite is a 3D system. We need a, a, a high performance 3D landscape calculation code to be able to perform this uh, calculation. So we will be laying the foundation by doing this project to allow us to acquire the, acquire the software and the tools to, perf to apply landscape uh, theory to future 3D problems. So I think this is a very good um, problem for us to, uh, to start. <clears throat> so it's just some um, initial preliminary results. Uh, so here I show you the electron, 3D electron potential uh, for the cesium lead bromide iodide mix system that is ready to be uh, fed into a landscape calculation. And you can see that um, so here, here, there are some details on the left. Uh, if you are interested, we can discuss it later. But what, what I want to show is that um, you can see that in the random, so this is a random uh, uh, alloy, and you can see that there are regions of highly localized uh, uh, regions of, of very different uh, electron potentials. And this is, I feel that uh, it is a, a very good uh, platform for us to apply this landscape theory to this potential. And so if you look at the scale bar here, in the figure on the right, so <laughs> the band gap, uh, the average band gap of the system at a one third composition is uh, 0.24, which is roughly the yellow color you see. So it is true that this electron, electronic potential is mostly the average value. However, there are regions of, uh, of red and green of, uh, whereby this is the band gap, where the, the electron potential differs significantly from the average value. And similarly, uh, next I show the effective mass for the same uh, alloy potential. And you can see that there are significant variations in these systems and we can, um, yeah, this is our values we can use to input into the landscape uh, calculation to obtain uh, landscape results and, uh, and, and for further analysis. So there's a lot of parameters we can vary in, in these systems, for example, the screening parameter. So to generate these images, the screening parameter I used is one, 0 0.6 nanometer, which is uh, one lattice parameter of a cubic phase of the sky. And these effective masses and uh, the bank, band, look, band edges positions were taken from first principle calculations, uh, such as DFT, a density functional theory, and Green's function method um, that people have published early on. <clears throat> so essentially, we are building a, a, a multi-skill modeling whereby we can compute some physical properties from a very uh, high level atomistic uh, simulations. And we take these values and feed into uh, this landscape and turn that into a finite element problem, uh, which uh, then can be solved using um, sort of multi, so this multi-skill modeling at a higher length scale. And lastly, I want to highlight that uh, a more interesting uh, physical problem actually in Proska is the dynamic disorder. Uh, on the left, you can see the black figure shows the airbag energy as a function of temperature. And you can see that it extrapolate, extrapolating this airbag energy, we can see that the airbag energy goes to a very, very small values as the temperature goes to zero, which is very, very surprising given the, the very strong sort of uh, disorder present in the system. 
So a more, fun, a more interesting problem after we've solved the static disorder part of the PROS guide is to apply our knowledge to the dynamic disorder in PROS guide. Uh, for example, by applying perturbation to the potential and obtaining you know, a uh, perturbation in the, in the landscape. And there's also some uh, parallel exper experimental work to measure the temperature dependent urban tails of mixed perovskite. So we're hoping to tie in both the theory and experiments uh, for this work. And, and that is all, thank you very much. Great, thank you, Jan, very nice. Thank and you. the floor is open for questions. Okay, uh, I have one. Okay. Also, my name is just on the slide. Still, I have one. Uh, it's uh, about the. Uh, so, would you say that uh, uh, the the first part of the the problems that you showed, which mm -hmm. is simply the uh, static measurement of the back tail, right, is more uh, of academic type. If like a, a test bed for the theory. And the dynamic disorder is the, the, real, the real thing that you are interested in, or are uh, they both of interest actually? They are, they are both of interest. I would say the dynamic disorder is more of a high impact interest. The static disorder is still interest because it allows us to obtain, say, for example, the degree of uh, wave function localization in the perovskite system, which is currently unknown. For example, this can be sort of seen as by understanding what the uh, smearing parameter is, the screening parameter lambda is. So our hypothesis is, uh, <clears throat> is that in wave, because this system are so good, right? So we, we think that the wave function is highly delocalized. So the screening parameter should be relatively large. And that if we can confirm using the landscape theory, that will be a, 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 a definitely of interest to, to us. Okay, thank you. I have a question on the, Urbach, the temperature dependence of the Urbach energy. Yep. Um, so do you, so maybe Claude can help. If not, uh, I'm sure you can answer. Sorry, do you get this naturally just from the from the phonon? This is all on the order of the acoustic phonon occupancy. Do you get this naturally just out of the phononics? Like if you look okay. at gallium arsenide, the world's according to Claude, the world's greatest semiconductor. Uh -huh. Do you get all of this directly from the phononics, just from the acoustic phonon? Uh, is this something you would get get directly? Oh, uh, uh, um, I think this one is from a, a set of uh, temperature dependent PL measurement, and then they they apply some uh, some uh, relationship. This is all uh, experimental results from another group from the paper below, and I I don't know whether you can uh, obtain that directly easily from uh, looking at the phonon. Is that? That's my um, question. Yeah, you get the, these. Are these all just the 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 change in the energy eigenvalues from from uh, phonon on occupancy? Claude, are you there? So I mean, I mean, uh, I, Jim, I can perhaps comment. Okay. Um, yeah. I mean, I think you, the answer to your question is yes. Um, and the uh, I think it's, it's the case that the Urbach energy, at least the dynamic part of it, is at low temperatures set by the uh, zero point energy of the phonons. Um, so that limits how low it can get. Um, and the in intriguing thing is that the phonons and these perovskite materials are very low frequency. So if you freeze, you, if you freeze them out, the zero point energy is actually quite small. Right. Um, uh. So that's sort of, uh, it's, it's, but it's all very counterintuitive because by any normal standard, these are materials with very high defect levels. And in the case of the random alloys, uh, one might have expected significant energetic disorder um, from that. Yeah. So it's interesting, Richard, and you've moved away, you're moving to simpler, you're moving away from these, the data or the calculations, the previous slide, these are looking more and more like pure inorganic compounds. They don't have a methyl or ammonia group, right? Well, the, we, we don't think that the vibrations associated with the methyl ammonium play much role. Okay. Um, um, and in computationally, uh, Yun has wisely gone for the cesium analog. Um, uh, I mean, the, the logic for this is that we think um, that the 
disorder that matters um, in the organic materials um, is actually dynamic disorder because again they have um, quite low there are low frequency modes that modulate significantly the overlap of uh, pi wave functions um, between adjacent molecules mm -hmm. um, and it's so I think if we can get a good handle on uh, techniques to um, model dynamic disorder um, that will be a, a useful contribution in the field. Uh, as, as they were challenged. Um, um, <laughs> my knowledge from the uh, pure materials goes back to the Doe Redfield uh, theory. But maybe I'm wrong, maybe something happened in between, uh, Richard. But by then, the theory was that the, uh, the Obartel in uh, the pure materials was due to still defects uh, in homogeneity in the materials that gave rise to uh, local microfields that would uh, give uh, Obartel for the effect of Franz Keldisch yeah. effect. Yeah. Um, so, um, um, I, I have to say, uh, yes, the, the, the literature is, I find rather confusing. Um, I mean, I, you're right, yes. But there does seem to be a significant temperature dependence. Yes, so but, but the limit then, but the limit is not the uh, phonons. It's uh, something else. Really, 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 you're in silicon. You know, the state of, in float zone silicon that's ultra pure. You're at ten to the twelfth uh, defects per cubic centimeter or less. You have you have more than ten to the fifteen oxygen. Not after the not after they clean it. No, well, they precipitate the oxygen. They don't clean it. And then you have microfield still. Okay, I'm going to move us on to the final talk. You can discuss this. But <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>